Welcome to Slayer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, my five favorite guitar players from the LA glam, hair, 80s metal scene. I did a video, the same thing with singers uh, from that era. I'll leave that linked down below. And the criteria for me here is the same. The guitar players have to have established themselves in the 80s. They have to have some connection to the LA glam scene. They have to have part of that sound. So for instance, I'm not going to include Vivian Campbell. I, he has no connection really to the whole LA scene. Dio doesn't sound like that. Not going to include Eddie Van Halen. Van Halen started in the late 70s, so they sort of predate all this stuff. Not going to include Randy Rhodes, even though he's an LA guy. When he was with Ozzy, did that sound didn't have anything to do with the LA Sunset Strip sort of hair glam sound. So I'm going to try to stick to guys that are associated with that scene or the music that they're playing is, is connected to that scene. Okay, so for number five for me, I'm going with Tracy Guns from LA Guns. LA Guns comes a little bit later in the scene, uh, but I've always loved his playing. I hear a little bit of a, of a Randy Rhodes influence. Uh, I love the way he, he's got a lot of chops, but he's got a good feel and he's got a really cool tone. When he riffs along, he always throws in little fills and everything, which I always really like. I think it makes, uh, makes, uh, makes it interesting when you're listening to the music. So Tracy Guns at number five for me. Number four, he's, he probably would have landed maybe higher on some people's lists, but uh, Warren D. Martini from Rat. Uh, love the guitar duo of uh, Robin Crosby and Warren. I always thought Warren, great melodic player. Uh, his soloing, very catchy and melodic, yet still technical. And his riff writing is always very interesting. He wasn't just like a typical power chord guy. He always did sort of like interesting little things like the beginning riff to lay it down. For instance, he's doing all this stuff, you know, stretching his hand out and doing all these sort of interesting things. So Warren lands at number four for me. Number three, uh, I'm going to go with uh, Brad Gillis here from Night Ranger. You know, what's their kind of, they, they weren't really a Sunset Strip band, uh, but uh, they were in there. Their sound fit that style. So for me, that's why uh, they land. I would connect them to that whole scene, even though they didn't come out of the Sunset Strip thing. And they sort of predated a little bit too. But I've always loved Brad's uh, guitar sound. I think he has a super cool guitar sound. Uh, He's also a very unique player, the way he did stuff with the whammy bar and just his whole style I always thought was really unique and I thought he really stood out. Maybe a bit of a stretch to connect him to this scene, but I don't know. I felt I felt it was appropriate. Number two, could have been number one maybe on a lot of people's list, is George Lynch. I think you'd know that he would be on this list. Somewhere, Doc in a band you definitely associate with the whole LA uh, glam sound. George, another extremely unique player with a very unique tone. Another guy who does interesting things with his riff playing, uh, his lead playing, tons of chops. He's, he's a guy, too, that I always like the fact that he sort of broke out of the traditional, you know, most guitar players play like blues scales and pentatonic scales. And although he does that, he does a lot of different chromatic and twists those riffs around and kind of really makes him his own and he just has a really really unique voice uh one of the more technical chopsy players from this era so george lynch at number two for me this number one for me may be a bit of a stretch but i put him on this list because i really feel like this album has that sound i mentioned earlier that i wouldn't include randy on this because i didn't feel like blizzard and diary have any sonic connection to the glam scene but I do feel like this album does have an L.A. Sunset Strip sound. And Jake was from that scene. You know, he played in an early incarnation of Rat. So I'm going to put Jakey Lee as my number one favorite guy from that L.A. scene. And he really had that sound. He had that flashy, technical way of playing. But he he's super, super technical, does all kinds of unique things with his playing especially on this album this is a very la glammy sounding ozzy album 
uh, for me. His, his solos are memorable. I love the way when he plays riffs, he throws in all kinds of crazy fills. He, he does all kinds of noises and tapping and all, he does like all the stuff and he sort of throws, throws it all in there and it still sounds like him. He still has this unique voice. So again, maybe a stretch to put him on this, but I think that this, this album because of this, I wouldn't put Bark at the Moon, for instance, if, if the only album Jake had done with Ozzy was Bark at the Moon, I wouldn't have put him on the list then because I don't think sonically that sounds like a, a glam album, but this has a lot of elements to it. I mean, uh, Killer of Giants, uh, Lightning Strikes, Secret Loser, Never Know Why, Shot in the Dark, you know, all great songs with cool, unique riffing and just fantastic soloing. So. Jakey Lee, my number one. All right, let me know what you think of my selections. Let me know who some of your favorite guitar players from the L.A. glam hair scene are. Let me know down below. Till we see you again, make sure you rock hard, hard free.